Well, happy Monday. Woo. Well, I've showed you pictures of my granddaughter, Louisa. That's not good enough. I thought I would introduce to you her personally. This is Louisa Noreen Borsma, born on October 22, 2018. What do you think? Yeah, looking pretty good. Which, if you do the math, Luis is going to be six months old a week from today. But before we celebrate her half birthday next Monday, Luis has got a big day on Sunday. Because this Sunday on Easter, Luis is going to be baptized. And guess who gets to baptize her? Me. Her grandpa Borsma. I get to do it. How cool is that? So we got a big day this coming Sunday. And this Sunday, the Borsma family and the Wyatt family will join all the congregation of Fifth Reformed Church in Grand Rapids to celebrate and witness the baptism of Louisa Noreen Borsma. And on that Sunday, during the service, John Sherrill, who is the lead pastor at Fifth Reformed Church, is going to call my son, or our son, Aaron, and his wife, our daughter-in-law, Hannah Beth, and Louisa, up to the front of the sanctuary next to a baptismal fount like this. And he's going to say, whoa, and he's going to say, something like this, that baptism is a visible sign of an invisible reality. The visible sign, he's going to say, is water. Water refreshes, water cleanses, water purifies. We use water because Jesus said, I am living water. That's the sign which points to the invisible realities or the invisible promises of this, that in Jesus, our sins are forgiven. And that in Jesus, we are promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus, we are assured of eternal life. And in Jesus, in baptism, we are grafted into a greater family as well. Then John will say to Aaron and Hannah Beth that he would like them to affirm their faith. And he will say to them, do you accept the gospel of God's grace in Jesus Christ revealed in the Old and New Testament of the Bible and that this is the only way to eternal life? And do you promise to pray for Louisa, do you nurture her in the Christian faith? And do you promise also, Aaron and Hannah Beth, to, to in your own lives, to, sh to show the joy of new life in Christ by active participation in the church through worship and prayer and service? And then he'll ask the whole congregation, just like this, he'll ask the whole congregation to stand and they're going to have to make promises to Hannah Beth and Aaron and Louisa. And he's going to say to them, do you promise to pray for Louisa? Do you promise to encourage her in the faith? Do you promise to teach her and to love her and to care for her? And they'll all say, we will. And then we'll affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. And then after that, I get to baptize Louisa in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's cool about that is that that day is going to be a big day for the Borismas and the Wyatts 
and the people of Fifth Reformed Church. Because we're, we're making some serious promises that day to Louisa and also to God. Because we're saying to Louisa, we're responsible for you. And we're going to pray for you and encourage you. Now, it uh, includes all of us, but it includes you guys too. Because if you are a follower of Jesus, you are a part of the greater Christian family that is mandated to love and care for the next generation that God is bringing into this world like Louisa. So that means, Sean, stand up. <laughs> that means, Sean, <laughs> there, Sean, you, you are charged by God <laughs> to love, to encourage, <laughs> and to point Louisa to Jesus. Will you do that? Absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, little girly pearly. All right, that means, Sabrina, stand up, stand up. Sabrina, that means you are charged by God to love, to care, and to point Louisa to Jesus. Will you do that? Yes, I will. Yeah. Okay, girly. So you're a part of this. Even though you won't be at the baptism, you're a part of raising Louisa in the faith as well. Now, you're also responsible not just for Louisa. We're responsible for each other as well, too, to encourage one another on, to spur one another on. I love this text from... Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. The Apostle Paul says this, and let us provoke one another on to love and good deeds, not forsaking to meet with each other, as some have habit, but meeting all together and encouraging each other all the more as the day of the Lord draws near. Now that word provoke in the text is the Greek word para eximus, and it literally means to spur one another on or to push one another on, to provoke, to poke one another on in a positive sense. And in fact, in the scriptures, this is one of the few times that this word is used in a very positive manner. And so what the Apostle Paul is telling us is that we are to poke to spur one another on to love and good deeds. We're really encouraging each other all the more to live right, to act right, to do the right thing. Which means, for us with each other, it means if a brother or sister is struggling with a sexual temptation, we are to come alongside of them and lovingly poke them in a different direction that leads to life and to flourishing. Or it means if a brother or sister are, are uh, speaking poorly or downgrading somebody else of a different background or a different, different uh, experience, that we're to come alongside of them and lovingly poke them on to a different direction that leads to life and it leads to flourishing. That means if a brother or sister is drinking too much, smoking too much, talking too much, it means we're to come alongside and lovingly poke them in a different direction that leads to life and faith. That means if a brother or sister is eating too little, or investing in others too little, or, 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 or uh, giving God too little. It means we're to come alongside and lovingly poke them in a different direction that leads to Jesus. 
And when we do this, do you know what happens? You know what you're doing when you do this to a brother or sister? You're living into your baptismal promises that you make to each other. Do you get it? Like the promises Sabrina and Sean made, you're living into those promises to each other to live a way that honors Jesus. So here's the close. Here's the close. You're probably not going to be at the baptism Sunday. You won't. You won't. But you kind of will in spirit. You will be there in spirit. Because here's, here's the thing. For Louisa, you had the permission. No, you, ha you had the mandate from her grandpa and from God that any time in her life, in elementary school, high school, college, beyond, you have the charge to love her, to care for her, to come alongside of her in para eximus, to poke her in the right direction that leads to the person of Jesus. Will you do that? Will you do it? And here's the other thing. We have the courage and commitment to do that with each other as well, to come alongside, to poke each other in the, in the right way, in a loving way, in a different direction that points to Jesus. Let's do it. Let's do it as we enter into this holy week. Let's pray. Loving God, you set the perfect example where you sent your son Jesus to, to lovingly come alongside us in the flesh and to give us life. You are the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, Lord, we want life. We want to choose life, and we want to choose life for each other and flourishing and for Louisa and the next generation to come. So God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the ability to lovingly come alongside each other and poke each other, push each other in the right direction that leads to Jesus. We pray this all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.